the fact. Big K. Tsugaru Shamisen sounds so loud and powerful. But how much power do I actually need? Excellent question, Trish. This is an often misunderstood area of Tsugaru style, especially for newcomers, but even those who have been playing for years. Basically, the misconception is uh, Tsugaru's style sounds very powerful, so you need to use a lot of power in order to achieve the powerful tone. Now, this sounds reasonable, but actually ends up using way more power than necessary and increases the chance of breaking your bachi or damaging your wrist. I've heard some folks say that, uh, at least one, that they break $2,000 bachi uh, every year. Almost like it's a sign of a good player. I say, if uh, someone brags about breaking their car every year, would you call them a good driver? Probably not. Breaking a bachi isn't a sign of good technique. It just shows the player is using way too much force. Today, I'll show you just how much force is required for achieving the maximum amount of percussive tone we can get from our shamisen, specifically for Tsugaru style. First, when we hear the powerful tone of Tsugaru style, what we're specifically hearing are the percussive strikes called tatakibachi. Basically, tatakibachi is done by raising the bachi up, swinging down to strike the string, and then following through so the tip solidly snaps against the skin, which makes the percussive thwack we hear. Now there are three things people commonly do when attempting tatakibachi. First, some people are afraid of damaging the skin, and so after they strike the string, they immediately pull up, like so. Now if you don't strike the skin, you're not going to get a percussive tone at all. Next, other people know they have to strike the skin and are able to get a nice snapping tone on the two thinner strings, but once they play the thick ichinoto, the snapping tone immediately goes away, like so. This is simply because it's difficult to get the bachi past the thick string with enough follow-through to solidly snap against the skin. Finally, there's another section of people who are completely opposite. I've personally witnessed that the shamisen can bring out a person's pent-up aggression, and when they start playing, they'll slam the bachi down on the string as hard as they can. Others are somewhat taught to do it this way, without the emotional component. It works to some degree, but it's a clumsy way to get the percussive tone just through brute force. Basically, some students are instructed to pull the bachi up high enough so they can see the underside of the blade before swinging down in order to achieve the maximum level of swinging force, like so. Uh, Yes, you do get the percussive tone, and it looks impressive, but it's far from the ideal way to achieve it. Many players don't know that with a little thought, they can yield the same level of percussive tone with far less effort. How so? First, know that there is a limit or cap to how much power gets converted into the quality of percussive tone. Our goal is to hit that cap without going beyond it. I'll show you where the cap is and how we can reach it. First, let's start with the gentle strike as our baseline. It doesn't touch the skin, so there's no percussion. We want to have a sharp snapping tone, so let's increase the swing of the bachi. This is sounding louder, and there's a bit of percussion, but the classic Tsugaru Tataki Bachi has a very clear, sharp, snapping sound, like the snap of the fingers. So we're not quite there yet. The extra swing gave us the power, now we just need follow through. To get this, generally we have to hold the bachi parallel to the strings and set the blade about 45 degrees from the skin and ensure that our thumb is almost perpendicular to the strings. If we lead the bachi swing with our thumb, we'll be guiding the force of the momentum with our thumb in a very focused way. 
This gives maximum efficiency and makes it a lot easier to strike the string with enough follow through to firmly plant the bocce tip to the skin. Let's try it out. There we go. We've got a nice, clear, percussive tone with that defined, iconic snap. When you hear that finger snap-like click, you've reached the cap. The percussive tone has reached its maximum clarity. Once you reach that, if you add more power, the sound doesn't get any better. The only result is stressing your bocce or your hand with no tonal benefit. So here's the sound we're looking for. Let's figure out how to get it. Again, let's position our bocce in this way. Handle parallel to the strings, bocce blade, 45 degree angle from the skin, and make sure the thumb is rather perpendicular to the string and leading the swing. So much of this motion is really dependent on the thumb. So what might help is putting the bocce down and doing the same motion to really see how the thumb moves. We want to see the thumb swing down perpendicular to the strings and basically leading the rotation of the hand. Now pick up your bocce again and repeat. And so when our bocce swings down, we want our thumb to guide the force which has been built from the momentum of the swing. We want to guide that force down to strike the string and then use the momentum to keep going and firmly plant the bocce tip to the skin. Oh, goodness, that's a mouthful. Sound confusing? Probably is. Um, just in, in general, the thumb is leading the swing, leading the, leading the charge to where you want to stick it, which is on the skin. Anywho, we can adjust the momentum by how far we swing the bocce. The further our thumb is from the string, the wider our bocce swing is and the more momentum we can build. You only need enough momentum in order to hear the sharp snapping tone. How much momentum is needed to get the snap? It varies depending on the player's confidence and skill. Those who are experienced and have an internal awareness for their uh, thumb's follow through don't need to swing it that much. I just raised my bocce about three finger widths from the string and that's enough for me to get solid tataki. It feels very relaxed and comfortable. In the beginning, when you naturally haven't built up the muscle memory for follow through yet, you might need to raise your thumb higher to build more momentum. So start with your bocce close to the strings and strike down. So that's pretty good. Maybe I only need one finger. I guess I only need one finger. Um, yes, start with it close and see if you can get a solid snapping to that bocce. Um, if not, just gradually increase the distance, raise your thumb up and keep going. Raise it enough until you can hear that solid finger snap like strike. Once you can hear that, you don't need to go any further. Later on, as you build muscle memory and focusing the force with your thumb feels more comfortable, you'll eventually be able to achieve the same clear snap with a much narrower swing. That's about it. Just a reminder, strength has nothing to do with achieving a solid, powerful tone. The force is generated with momentum from the swing, and your thumb is simply guiding the force to the string and the skin. Your hand and fingers are only there to keep the bocce aligned, so keep it relaxed as possible. A relaxed hand will make your tone even clearer, sound more powerful, and be able to strike faster. The rest is just sweet riffs. So that's my thoughts on the subject. I also highly encourage you to watch the videos I made with Reagan Fuji and the Body Mechanics course, both linked below. Uh, those give uh, other insights to tataki bachi, which I didn't address in this video, so watching them all might give you a nice, well-rounded um, idea of how this technique is done. Plus, they're free. Now that your tataki bachi is super relaxed and efficient, you can use that pent-up energy to heartily Smash that like and subscribe button. Kyle Abbott.